Here it is, first podcast. We're going to talk about cucumber today. So cucumber, behavior-driven development. Is it a good idea, behavior-driven development? Is it valuable? I think it depends on the situation. It can have a place, but its purpose is very specific and very particular. And it's to use a common language across an entire development organization in order to talk about features and functionality from the language of testability. Yeah, that's amazing. I don't know what you just said. What do you mean? <laughs> like, it's like, like, never mind the cucumber aspect of behavior driven development. Like, why would any development team benefit from that? The idea is if you can communicate everything the same way from the beginning to the end of the development cycle, you can better capture and understand what it is you're trying to deliver to the user. Hmm. I don't know that I've ever worked in a truly behavior-driven BDD environment. I think they Hard all kind of think it's a good idea from some aspect. I feel like nobody's ever really, like really, nowhere I've worked, have they really did, done it. it like it was, it always feels like it's been a failed attempt, at least in my career. <laughs> and so like, I guess all my experience with almost BDD has been using cucumber, places that try to use cucumber. Um, and again, like everywhere I've been that used cucumber, weren't really using it the way I think it was originally intended, which was to help with what you just said about how it could benefit a development team. Yeah, that's definitely the mistake a lot of people make is the idea of cucumber as a tool is not effective. The, the purpose of Cucumber is to be uh, a communication style more so than anything else. And the tool when you're writing the automated tests or even just manual tests is it's to take that same plain English communication and apply it to code. You could almost say Cucumber, the features, the feature file is like the manual test written out. Right. That's supposed to be some living documentation that anyone can read and fully understand what the feature does. And because it's tied to the automated testing, you then have living documentation and proof that that functionality is still working all in one place. So yeah. it's great in theory, but horribly implemented in almost every situation. So good in theory, bad in practice, kind of like socialism. <laughs> sure, that's one way to put it. <laughs> uh, yeah, every. I mean, <clears throat> I think for it to, never mind some of the technical hurdles, but for it to work, it has to be one person writing the the feature and a different person making turning those steps in the feature file into working code. And it actually goes further than that. Okay, go ahead. So in order for behavior driven development to work, it has to actually drive development, not testing. This isn't behavior-driven testing. This is behavior-driven development. 
sorry, product manager, product owner should be writing this cucumber language. Yeah. A, a developer should then be taking that cucumber language and creating the application code that satisfies that. Right. And at the same time, the QA as to whoever or the, the developer is writing the automated test code that will be paired with that development code and delivered as a single product. But it is, it's essentially test-driven development, but taken a step further where someone defines the, the, the behavior in a testing language, and then that drives both development and testing. So I've worked in a place before with Cucumber and the project managers would create stories in Jira or whatever, and they would write that that Gherkin language in there. Um, and so in a sense, development was using that, those definitions, but those definitions are never we're never it's always one sentence right it's never detailed enough to like um to use for a testing scenario right and usually it would be like the gherkin sentence and then a bunch of normal like sort of acceptance criteria that you see in a story on us on scrum teams right. instead of the whole story being written in gherkin language right and so from a test angle the tester couldn't just copy that and then write the code for that like cucumber sort of expects you to be able to do right and so it just it's do you think it's maybe that just people don't know how to use cucumber correctly it's and gotta be part of it I mean, it, it, because it's they're not an easy thing. BDD? Yeah, there's there's this idea that if you do BDD, it'll speed up development or like whatever ideals people have, and just using a tool doesn't solve that problem. You have to train people to use it properly. So there's definitely some aspect of people just don't know how to use it. But at the same time, it is a very different way of working, and it requires your product owners to be extremely technical on the testing side of things. They have to understand how you implemented all of these little gherkin phrases, because if they change one word, it's it's now something new. That means it's a new requirement or a new action, new step. And so they have to know every line of code that you've written. And that's that's impossible to keep on that, that kind of level, especially when you've got non-technical product managers. And they can't like especially if you have more than one then they would have to collaborate on what how to write things one might be like i log in the other one might write i log on and well that's two different yep. that's two different code paths now when it they're both just trying to do the same thing so so let's talk about it from the test perspective like it it what is it when when it's not being used in the way that we just talked about what problems does that cause for the the automation engineer it's an absolute jumbled mess like this is introducing a whole other layer of abstraction in test code simply to make test code readable to a broader group of people but in order to write that gherkin syntax properly you have to already understand the code so you're making it non-technical friendly but requiring technical knowledge in order to write something that's non-technical friendly it's this weird roundabout way that doesn't satisfy any of those needs right and like you said it's an extra layer of abstraction and it's i think even more than that it's not something that the person who needs to write the code needs to have available it's like a it's sort of like a um 
almost like a uh, what's the word? A summary of the code that's there, um, and it's just not useful in to anybody but non-technical people. And my experience has been that non-technical people never look at it or use it, do anything with it. And so it's like creating documentation for nobody to read. It's, yeah. It's kind of kind of pointless. Um, I think. So those are that's kind of the reason why I don't like cucumber but there is one aspect to cucumber that i have experienced that is good and that is you can take somebody without any automation knowledge and almost you can kind of it's an easy way to ease into test automation somehow it makes understanding code easier because you gotta you got to write this little sort of intermediate step. Yeah. And then I think the, the key idea with with Cucumber and behavior driven development is simplicity, but it has to be some simple in every way. So yeah. the application has to be simple. The functional requirements or the functionality that you're you're creating within that application has to be simple. The the test code that you're writing has to be simple. As soon as you start adding other layers of complexity to it, it starts to fall apart because then you have to get more specific on all the steps that you're taking. And like in this situation, it does this, but in this situation, it does that. Now you've got this longer step that has nuance to it. When it's simple, it's not too bad. But as soon as you start adding complexity of, of any sort of modern app, it, yeah. it just blows up and goes off the rails. And what about what about implications as far as um, introducing negative effects to your test framework, like flakiness or performance impacts and stuff? Like, what have you experienced? It, it's way slower for sure, but kind of in every aspect of that. Like, it, it's slower to run. It's also slower to debug. It's it's harder to understand. It makes it easier to understand the functionality in some cases, again, if it's pretty simple because you've got that plain language, but, but then you've got to step through to the step definition. And then that's so dynamic to work in all these different steps that are on different pages that it's like, okay, well, what the heck is this doing? And you just keep going down these rabbit holes and you can never figure out what the problem actually is. Yeah, I've I've experienced that exact same thing. And I've also experienced that you run into a lot more code duplication because people there's not uh, it's not um something that's easy to keep organized so people write several different functions that all do the same thing because there's no easy way to find an existing sort of function if you will yeah. and so then there's code duplication then when that when you have that and then you fix one and then some of the tests still fail because they're using the other function that you didn't update. So all those problems of not being dry crop up and it's harder to maintain. Yeah. It can cause straight up failures sometimes too, where yeah. you, you, you define the exact same step definition, but it's in multiple files. And so the linter doesn't find it. And then you go to run it and it 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 can't figure out which one. So it just fails. So when you go and search for that step definition, then you might finally find, oh, that exact same thing existed someplace else. Now, what are they doing? And I've got to name mine something else to make it different. Yeah. 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 I've never had an experience with it that I thought was amazing. Yeah. Um, and using it just seems like putting the brakes on your test framework in so many different ways, right? Performance, um, scalability, like just coding good practices, all these things seem to be 
uh, impacted negatively. Um, the only experience I've ever had where it worked well, it was, it was actually a pretty good implementation of behavior-driven development and the testing and the application started out very simple. Uh, as it expanded, as it grew, as we got more nuance in there, it, it fell apart pretty quick. But the benefit I saw was creating the mental space for developers who are not test-driven development type people where they don't want to see it that way. It, it shifts their mindset a little bit so they can approach it differently yeah. and see how developing from a vertical slice and actually following the agile practices works because they were forced to do it through this BDD model. But long-term sticking with some sort of cucumber thing, not helpful, but using it as a as that transition to just get people to think differently. I think that's the only benefit I've ever actually seen. Yeah. So in conclusion, cucumber, cucumber sucks. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree. I think if I, every project I ever am on for the rest of my career, I will actively seek to remove it from any sort of code base that exists, just, just from a standpoint of making the code base better and the tests better and more solid, so. The crazy thing with Cucumber is that you don't need to add up that other layer and add that abstraction of everything. You can do that without Cucumber. You just name your functions well. Right. If you give a function a good name, it serves the exact same purpose. Everyone can read it. Sure, maybe you don't have spaces or you can choose snake case or something so that you use the underscores, but no one non technical is reading it anyway. So just name right. your functions well and you solve that whole problem. Your functions well and your variables well, and it's just as readable, if not yeah. even more so. And um, yeah, everything from your classes on down. If you practice naming things well, it's just as readable, if not more readable. Well, man, let's call it here. Cool.